This week on BGTV. We'll go hiking and running with Olivia O'Hara. Angelica Tribidianos will interview two varsity swimmers at Washingtonville High School. Gianna Archibald will inform us about how to sign up for early dismissal and late arrival. Blaze Hewlett will show us how the yearbook club is operating a bit differently this year. Next, we will take a look at some student-run school businesses with Dennis Hayes. And finally, what you've all been waiting for, get ready for another Showbiz with Sean. Stay tuned for another episode of BGTV. Hey, Wizard Nation, I'm Sarah. And I'm Gabby. And you're watching BGTV. BGTV. Don't forget to purchase your personalized yearbooks by January 29th. Recognition ads are on sale until February 11th. Also, remember to choose your senior portrait pose by February 1st. Attention students, just a reminder, all school meals, breakfast and lunch will be served free of charge until the end of the year. This is only for meals and does not include a la carte or snacks. It's so hard finding things to do in the pandemic. I have an idea for you, Gabby. You should go hiking. That's a great idea, Sarah, except I don't know how any good places to go. You're in luck, Gabby, because this week, Olivia O'Hara will be showing us some fun places to go for an outdoor adventure. Hey, Wizards, this is Olivia O'Hara reporting to you from Washingtonville High School. Today, we're going to be talking about hiking, as well as taking a look at some teachers and students sharing some of their favorite hiking and running trails. <laughs> Get in, Moses, we're going on an adventure! <laughs> I just love going out there, really connecting with nature, releasing good energy, always getting positive vibes from the trees and everything like that. I like hiking with my friends and it's a good source of uh, exercise. I like hiking because I like to stay active and I'm a runner so it gives me a lot of leg strength and I just love nature. How often do you go hiking? Um, in the summer I usually go like three times a week because the weather's really nice but right now it's kind of cold so I only go like once a week. I like to hike around uh, four or five miles a day. Um, I really only hike during the summer and spring because like, I hate the cold. What are some of your favorite trails? Um, my favorite trails are the Heritage Trail and Mount Beacon. Mount Beacon is one of my favorites because they have the best view and Lancaster Park in Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for watching this week's segment on hiking. And remember, if you're ever bored at home, make sure to try out one of these amazing trails and dress accordingly. I'm officially ready to go put on my hiking boots and get fresh air. How about you, Sarah? I am definitely with you. But before we do that, let's stop by the pool and see what Angelica has to say about two of our varsity senior swimmers. Hey, Wizard Nation. My name's Angelica Tripodianos, your sportscaster for BGTV. Great news. Winter sports have started this week. 
low-risk sports such as track and swimming have just started up. This week on BGTV, we're going to take an inside look onto the boys' swim practice. Today, I'm here with Coach Wargo and Coach Frisbee to ask them a few questions about this upcoming swim season. So my first question is, what precautions are being taken to make sure there's a safe swim season? So Coach Frisbee has led us in that. We've uh, gone around the pool deck and we set up basically locker stations for each swimmer and diver. So they're six feet apart. Uh, we have sanitizing stations for all the equipment that we're using. So for example, we have plates for our dry land that they have to wipe down before and after use. Uh, in the lanes, each swimmer is at least six feet apart in, in the pool at all times. Um, the, the, the kids are, you can see right behind you here, they scan in this code just like you have to do on the way into school. Um, and that time stamps them into practice for us. What other advice would you give to athletes whose seasons haven't started yet? You know, I, I would give the same advice that we gave to our swimmers. Like Coach Risby said, we've had a couple Google Meets with them. And, you know, even going back to last spring when we were shut down, we checked in with them. and. And what we did was we gave them a packet of things. If they were able to have, say, you know, a set of dumbbells at home or whatever it might be, you know, we gave them our circuit for what we did with weight room training. Uh, we had a whole list of, you know, HIT workouts, high intensity interval training workouts that you can find on YouTube. So we gave them some sources there. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Jackson. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. What did you do as your off season training? So for off-season training, unfortunately, my normal club team was a casualty of COVID. So another team called the New York Sharks graciously let me swim with them. And I've been swimming with them since July. And I feel more ready than ever for this season. Um, we couldn't get any pools to dive at anywhere. So I've just been working out over the season, trying to keep in shape. What are your favorite swim events? My favorite swimming events are the 200 medley relay and the 200 freestyle relay because they really bring out the team component in swimming and being able to break two school records and make the state meet with some of my best friends and teammates is truly unforgettable. What are your favorite diving events? My favorite diving event is the 11 dive because we can hang out more and I came really close to breaking the school record last year. What are some of your personal goals for this season? Some of my personal goals are to break a minute in the 100 breaststroke, which would mean I would get a new school record, and I'm really excited for it. One of my goals is to also come close to or break the school record for the six dive meet. What are some things you're looking forward to this season? I'm just looking to hope that the season finishes in full six weeks. I just want to be able to have a senior season with my friends and teammates. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to competing and diving with the team. What are your future plans? So my future plans are I'll be attending SUNY Cortland in the fall. I will be part of their honors program, majoring in Spanish, and being a part of their men's swimming and diving team. In the future, I would like to dive in college. What a great practice, boys. I can't wait to see what you accomplish this season. This is Angelica Ciprianos, your sportscaster from BGTV. We have so many talented athletes here at Washingtonville. Swimming season starting up is very exciting. I can't wait to see our swim team compete this year. Up next is Gianna Archibald with her PSA on how to sign up for early dismissal and late arrival. I wish I could leave school earlier so I can have time to do my homework before practice. I wish school started later so I could get more sleep. I wish school ended earlier so I could have more time to get to work. Public service announcement. With late arrival and early dismissal, you can. With the new semester starting, some of you may have free periods or study halls during your first and last periods of the day. In order to get early release or late arrival, you need to carry a minimum of five classes, not including PE. You must have written parental permission through this document. It can be found in guidance. What would you do if you had early release? Well, I'd go snowboarding, frisbee golfing, mountain biking, or to the gym. You know, all the fun stuff. With my extra time on hand, I would probably go to the gym or do my homework a lot earlier just to get it out of the way and have more time to myself. This was a PSA with Gianna. I'll see you next week, Wizards. That was super informational. Thank you for telling us about that, Gianna. On another note, getting the yearbook each year is something to look forward to. It's a great way to relive all the memories from the year. I totally agree with you, Gabby. Let's see how the yearbook club is doing this year now that most of school is done virtually. 
Nation, I'm Blaze Hewlett, and I've got a question for you. We all know and love the Roaring Twenties, but how do we capture a year like 2020 without saying 2020? Let's ask the Yearbook Club. I'm here with Senior Yearbook Committee member Valerie Cuteman, and Valerie, I would love for you to tell us how the Yearbook Committee has adapted to COVID-19 restrictions. We've transitioned all of our meetings to online. We started an Instagram page so that people outside of the club can send in pictures so that they would also be, have the chance to be in the book. So do you think that this year is one of the most crucial to capture memories through photos? I do. I think it's very important because this year is so different from the rest, especially for seniors that we capture like everything that we can so we, in 20 years we can look back and have a laugh at what has happened this year. So I'm here with Senior Editor-in-Chief Stephanie Fuentes. And Stephanie, I'd like to know if you found any perks of editing from home. It's so much easier to just open my laptop and sit on my bed and edit instead of going to the meetings after school. It's so much fun. So can you take us through the creative process of finding topics and arranging where you're going to put what in the yearbook? All right, so it's a team effort. So me and my club, we always have to just shoot out ideas for whenever they find something. So they'll just give me a text. They'll be like, oh, do a pet page. And we always do a pet page each year. So you guys will definitely see that. So I send out a text to my team members and I ask them to go take pictures of people after school, say like on the track running, or if we need a picture of someone playing baseball, I would text them and I would be like, go take a picture, take one of the cameras. This year we have to just use our phones because of COVID. Well, I know that a lot of the yearbook is under wraps, but I'm wondering if you have a favorite section that you'd be all right talking to us about. My favorite section is definitely the pet page because each year I'm always putting my pet in it, but that's just my favorite. And like, you get to see like who has like the coolest pets. Do you see like goats and like, oh, goats are kind of crazy, but like you people like they have geckos and stuff. I just think that's like the funnest page because you really get to see like what our high school has as pets. Head over to the school's website to find out how you can buy your yearbook ahead of time. From BGTV, I'm Blaze Hewitt. After all these years, I'm truly going to treasure my last yearbook of high school. Keep up the great work, y'all. Great work is also being done by other students in Washingtonville. These diligent students have put incredible effort into making their own businesses. Wow, that's really impressive. Let's hand it over to Dennis Hayes so he could tell us a little more. As most kids aim to find their first job to make their own money, others are making money by becoming their own boss. Hey, Wizard Nation, it's Dennis Hayes here with BGTV, and today we're going to go visit Ziala Ray and talk to her about how she's starting her first business. Hey, Wizard Nation, I'm here with... Ziala Wright. So, um, word on the street is that you're starting a business. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, tell me about it. All right, so I'm starting a business where we sell jewelry pieces like necklaces, earrings, and all types of stuff like that. Um, the point of my business is to make girls feel pretty and add, like, you know, unique style to all their fashion choices. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, what made you start a business? Um, something that made me start a business was I like jewelry and then I also wanted to be my own boss before so I was like, when's a better time to do it than right now before I go off to college? Yeah, anything's better than a 9-5, right? Coming up with your product, can you tell me how that process is? Ah, uh, yes. So the process, this took me like four or five months to do it all together. Um, some of my products I hand make and then some of my products I actually buy from um, other places. Mm -hmm. But everything is unique. Everything, I look at everything, I tailor it before I send it off. So yeah, you guys are good. Anything men's? No, sorry, my niche market is to women only right now, but my second launch should be towards men. Yay. So jewelry price ranges from all over the place. What is your pricing going to be? Um, My pricing is like, I don't know, it's kind of cheap, but it's kind of like medium. My jewelry ranges from like $3 to like $30, but all my prices uh, are different based on the piece of jewelry. Oh, nice, nice. My so starting a business is a real big move. Do you have any concerns about it? Uh, yeah, some of the concerns I have is like, will my stuff sell and like... The pricing will people actually buy it, which I feel like is what every business owner thinks, of course. Yeah, of course, I feel so, that. Um, outside of the business, who is Ziala Wright? Um, Ziala Wright, she's a basketball player, she's a track thrower, um, she loves hanging out with her family and friends, and she loves jewelry. Nice, nice. So, um, how, is, how can the audience, how can the viewers find your products? Um, what they can do is they can go to my Instagram and they can click either the profile inside my bio or they can click the link in my bio, and either way is good. All right, so what is your Instagram? My Instagram is <laughs> shawty.ic, S-H-A-W-T-Y dot I-C-U. Oh, my gosh, I see why. I'm going to take care My Instagram is shawty.ic, S-H-A-W-T-Y dot I-C-Y. Thank you. I appreciate your time.
I am shocked by the amount of talent we have in this school. You know, we have a really talented student in BGTV named Sean Beck. I think he might win an Oscar for this one. You've got me really excited now, Gabby. Sit back and grab your popcorn, guys, for Showbiz with Sean. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Showbiz with Sean. This week, I'm doing Sean Madison, a playoff Billy Madison. Senior year has been pretty hard, so I'm going to go back to my roots in elementary school and learn it all over again. First grade was kind of hard. I mean, we're learning about words with like ong and ing, and it was kind of confusing, but I think I got go it down Sean. at the end. Go, Sean. Go, 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 Sean. Go, Sean. You got it. Okay, Sean. Go, 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 Sean. You got it. Dang, first grade is really hard. I think I'm just gonna skip to fifth grade though. Let's go. So what are we learning right now? Long division. Long division. That's hard. <laughs> I still don't know how to do that. And I didn't just learn. I also made some really cool friends. So what are we learning today? Reading. Reading and theme? Interesting. Interesting. Do you think I did good in class? Yeah. Then? Yes. And do you think I'm ready to graduate elementary school? Yes, because you're in this school. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Well, that's it. I think I did pretty good in elementary school. Congratulations, Sean. You have finished elementary school. Now, you can graduate high school. Wizards. Make sure to check out our weekly newsletter and podcast. Stay safe and healthy and see you next week on BGTV. BGTV.